Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again. I am here to review episodes 1 through 5 of Cobra Kai Season 4. I thought it would be a nice little compromise where <laughs> I would watch 1 through 5 today and then 6 through 10 tomorrow. I really hate binging. I despise it. It it makes me uh, angry. It makes me extremely upset, and it, it it it's probably it it might be one of my biggest pet peeves of all time, because it it it's just such a terrible trend, such a terrible new thing that's that's happened nowadays, where and and it leads to to the mindset of. Uh, of even worse ideas and I just it really see I can't even put it into words that's how much it pisses me off this binge watching business but that's the only <laughs> that's the only way that this will get any views unfortunately so whatever I have not and first off I have not seen the Karate Kid 3 and that that kind of that kind of worried me going into this since Terry Silver comes back and then I was not a huge fan of season three. I thought that it was a real mixed bag and it had a lot of problems in terms of inconsistent tone and story structure. I real I hated the story structure of last season. And this season's story structure it's it's better and so now I'm going to get into this season. I just wanted to tell you guys that to say that, like, I started off not really having any expectations for this season because I don't want to be disappointed and I don't want to be so excited that I'm let down a little bit because of, you know, having too many, having too, too, too uh, way too high hopes. And, and that, when that happens, it's it's almost even worse than when you're, than when something's bad but you know we've seen so many bad movies this year I mean I have I am so sick of watching bad movies and bad shows just seeing these pathetic excuses for films with terrible scripts scripts that might as well have been taken out of the toilet and I've just been so irritated having to watch just constantly all these bad movies and shows. It, it's the worst. So I'm glad that I got to watch Cobra Kai Season 4, even though I binged it, half of it today. This season is phenomenal. I love this season. I think that actually this is the best season so far of the show. I would say Season 4 and then seasons one and two are tied, and then season three is in last place. This was so good, and it's unfortunate that last season couldn't have been better, because all the a lot of the stuff that's good this season, it was built up last season. There are a lot of story points that built up towards this, what this this amazing season that we have now, and I just it it I really appreciate the getting this season four because it, it, it's such a positive show and, you know, we don't get a lot of that nowadays. Everything has to be negative. Everything has to be moody and, and dark and sad and depressing. And, you know, the editors are so depressed that they suck all the color out of everything. But in this show, it's like the opposite. It's colorful. It's creative. I love it. It's such a positive show and such a a bright light in the midst of this movie and television show apocalypse. And I really loved everything about this season so far. I would give every episode an A+. I mean, for starters, I love the characters. I mean, the characters are really... I love how they evolve and how they... You know, it's not like, oh, okay, you know, last season they were like this, and then this season they're going to be like this because it's going to 
fit into the story. You know, they have to be a certain way for plot convenience. No, you know, the the story is tailored around these characters and around their decisions and their, their mental states. And I really like that, the fact that, that there's attention to detail. You know, there's references to past seasons and all these past things that have happened. And, you know, you can really see the causes and effects from everything uh, like it's it's been very well thought out and you know screw all those people who said like you know th- this is why I said binging is bad because it leads to idiots who say like uh, why are we getting four seasons it's dragging on you know we should have just gotten three you know there's people who've said that and it's like oh god that's embarrassing <laughs> it's really embarrassing to have said that if you've seen this season because this feels like the show that the creators have been building up to for the past three years. It feels like, you know, I can really see their vision clearly to have these rivaling dojos, to have these different styles of fighting clashing with each other. And it's just such a, an amazing, I, I can't, I can't get enough of it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even really that mad that I binged it, you know, uh, it was a it was a pleasant binging experience, but I will say that the music the music is good, but I get I get really sick of them playing music in every single fight scene. Like I think that it should be where the music builds up the fight and then the fight doesn't have music, because honestly, a lot of the times it's taking me out of these fights. And it's funny because I would say these fights in this season are probably some of the best fights of the whole series so far. Like, I haven't seen the second half, but these fights are really, really good. You know, they're not Bollywood dance scenes like in uh, season three's finale. You know, these are really uh, some good fights, and they're they're kind of, you know, you're taken out of it because of the music. This, this wannabe action music that they have to insert into every fight scene, like, okay, there's a fight that's going to happen. We better turn up the boom box so that Action Sex Maniac 7 Track 5 plays, you know, and then you have the fighting, and it's this cool fight, and you got two characters. Oh, I've been so excited to see them fight. And then you hear, but then you hear this da, 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 in the background, like this really cheap sounding, like trash music that sounds like it was in a YouTube fan film. I mean, remember when they made that? Remember when they made that Mortal Kombat fan film? Or wait, no, that wasn't Mortal Kombat. I mean, the the Power Rangers fan film, uh, the one where they made the Power Rangers dark. It, that was a good fan film, by the way. But uh, they would have these fights, and then the background you hear this, da, 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 and it's like stop! Like I, we don't. It's a, the fighting is epic enough. You got characters that, that, that we like, characters who we love, characters who we hate. We don't need to hear some techno. Pussy music in the background going da 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 like shut up you fucking uh oh god turn that off nobody wants to hear that this is a fight we want to we want to hear the the yeah there you go hawk don't get me that hard, Miguel. You know, something like that. You know, we don't want to hear the, the this cheap background music that, you know, it sounds... Was it royalty-free? Did you... Did, okay, be honest. Did Netflix give you money to get music? Or did you have to go on YouTube and get royalty-free music? Because that's what I felt. I have to search for royalty-free music all the time. It's a fucking pain in the ass listening to hours and hours of trash music. And a lot of that music sounds exactly like the type of music in this show. But anyways, a big problem... Well, I guess I I think it's really the only problem so far this season besides the music is the story structure. Once again, 
I don't think, again, because I gave it an A+. Plus. I gave all the episodes so far an A+. Plus, so it's not a huge problem. But the, the story structure is pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Each episode feels like it's its own sort of... Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> uh, each episode doesn't really have an equal distribution of characters and stories. So... You have episode one. Oh, that has a lot of that character. Then episode two. Oh wait, uh, where where's the uh, where's that where's that guy? I want to see more of him. Come on. And then episode three. That guy is there again, a little, but then some, and then a little, and then episode four. He's in the whole thing. You 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 see what I mean? Like that's bad storytelling. It's it's very inorganic the way that it happens on the show. It almost feels it it's like they're it's like they're just moving their chess pieces around and it's like okay, we can't put this chess piece there yet because then that would happen. So we have to save that for another episode, you know. I really don't like the story structure sometimes and I think that it has to do with Netflix with this binging bullshit. And once again, Netflix, shame on you, okay? Shame on you for taking a show that, you know, is this fantastic show. All the fans love it. It's a masterpiece. It's the best thing we've gotten all year. And, you know, shame on you for putting it all out in one day. Uh, Put it out week to week like a real show. Uh, because it, it, it's really shitty. The fact that, it, it, you know, you can see the influence on the show. Because the creators, and I don't, I, and again, I'm just speculating. But from what I think, the creators, they know that people binge it. And they just, you know, they they eat it, they eat it, they they consume it all in one day. And then they forget about it. And it's like. Okay, bye bye. Uh, <laughs> like it's it's worthless almost because they just binge it all, and get it out all in one day. So the creators know that they can not have an equal distribution of character and story in each episode. They can say like, oh, we don't have to have that character in, in uh, these episodes because they're in those other episodes more, and people will just binge it all at once, so they won't really notice. Well, I noticed, and I'm a little upset about it. I think that it's it's kind of cheap to do that. It's really, it's 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 kind of lame, you know. I mean, the first two seasons had a good story structure, where it didn't, because characters just disappear and like stories, they they kind of like each episode, you know, they go so fast that you're just binging through them. And but you know that they're just forgotten about, and storylines are just left undone, and then they're picked up in a future episode. Like I really don't like that. But the thing is, is that I love all of what I saw. Like I loved, well, for the most part, I loved what I saw. It was so entertaining, and it, it it's hard to describe without just repeat repeating myself over and over. Like yeah, it was really good. It was really good. Uh, Surprisingly, I would say that Terry Silver is my favorite character of the season so far. I really love his character. He has a real, like, epic presence. Like, even though I haven't seen the third Karate Kid movie, his presence feels really grand when he's on screen. He's almost like the the Emperor and then Kreese's Darth Vader. But he's not really evil anymore, surprisingly. He's, uh, and this is going to get into spoilers, so, you know, because I, I, I don't have any food ratings, so, uh, this is non, this is spoilers from now on. Terry Silver is, like, he's less evil so far, and it, it's really cool that, like, he, I guess he was evil in the past, and now he's learned, and he's, he's had a character development, a character arc, and I, I just loved all the stuff with him. I mean, he, everything with him and everything with the villains has been my favorite stuff so far. Now, let's talk about the bad. 
Well, it's not really bad. It's just bad in comparison to everything else, I guess you could say. There's two storylines that sort of have issues for me. And surprisingly, it's not the new storyline. Because let's talk about the new one first. They basically have are starting to remake Karate Kid with this uh and and pardon me because I I I I can't remember his name. I I I I mean they basically just call him New Kid all the time. Uh you know I know I remember that his older brother is Sean, uh but there's this little black kid and he's a nerd and he's a computer nerd. He loves to play a, a video game all the time on the computer. And and honestly, the the computer game looked fun. Uh, it looked like a game that I'd like to play. Uh, it reminds me a lot of a uh, Wizard One Hundred and One mixed with like Roblox or something. Uh, it looked pretty cool. There's nothing like bad about that. Like, I think that that's a little unrealistic nowadays that people still get made fun of for playing computer games like that, like nerd quote unquote nerd stuff. You know, we've we've sort of gotten past that. Like, a lot of bullies, a lot of these, you know, quote unquote popular people in these schools, they they love nerd stuff. You know, they're all the people who go see the Marvel movies. You know, uh, speaking from personal experience, this jackass who went to my high school, he posted a Twitter post. And he, he said, it's a great time to be a nerd. And it's like, oh, God. I mean, <laughs> these these people, they just ride with whatever's popular and whatever's trendy. And it doesn't really feel like something like this pretty cool-looking computer game would be considered a, ner- a bad thing now. Like, it doesn't feel like it, it it's really something that people would get made fun of for. Uh, but... I'm not a little kid like the kid in the show. I'm just saying, like, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't understand even how you could even say that, like, he, he's uncool and he's stupid for playing a computer game. Like, who cares? Like, uh, those other kids fucking go home and watch football games uh, for hours and hours and hours. Like, uh, there's no difference between playing a video game for hours and hours and then watching football for hours and hours. <laughs> Uh, Sorry to say, but they're basically remaking Karate Kid with him. And then Daniel's youngest son, I really like the fact that he's now like more of a character. And that's something that I heard the creators talk about before, back when I used to watch these shit YouTube channels. Uh, When they interviewed the creators, they talked about how characters who don't get a lot of focus uh, in some seasons... They'll get more focus than others. And and I really like that. You know, that's a lot different than with the episode-by-episode episode story structure. Because that happens with, you know, seasons where uh, it, it's just, it's a lot more natural. Uh, so I love that, the way that he's now more of a character. And he's basically uh, bullying this nerd kid. And then you have the nerd kid who's in love with this other girl and then... I love the fact that instead of going to Miyagi-Do, he goes to Cobra Kai, and he goes to Robbie. You know, I love all these little twists and things. But again, with Robbie, I criticized him in Season three's review. I'm really not a fan of his character anymore. And I started off not a fan of him, and now I'm even more not a fan of him. You know, he's really just becoming... I don't know. He's he's just a he's just, he, he, I just I I don't like him at all, and and I don't like Daniel's wife either, Amanda Larusso. I don't like her character. You know she's doing all these. Th- it's funny because, it, and now this go, goes into the stuff that I would say I don't like compared to the others. So I like the remake of Co- of Karate Kid, kinda. The soft remake, if that's what you want to call it, I th- I I can't wait to see where that goes, but I I am feeling a little bit like the story structure is off, because in this episode five that I just watched, there wasn't really anything with that little kid in it, and it's like why, like why can't just. <sighs> I'm 
I'm surprised that Cobra Kai even got a season five, by the way, with how Netflix just likes to cancel everything, cancel Daredevil, canceled all the other great shows that they made. Oh, okay, I'm glad that they canceled a fucking Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I'm glad they canceled that shit. Uh, so what was I saying? Okay, what I didn't like, there's the storyline between Amanda and Tori. Is that her name? Yeah, it is. Tori. And I'm, I'm getting her mixed up because usually I just call her Peyton List when I talk about her. And then recently I saw her in the Eileen Warnos movie. And it's funny because there's this certain point where she's working a kid's birthday party as like a Disney princess character. And they, they sort of trick you into thinking that she's become a stripper. And it's hilarious because it feels like she's she's Eileen Warnos again in this season. Like, almost like she loved that movie so much that it's now bled into this show. And so it was kind of weird. It felt like, uh-oh, you got Eileen Warnos in this uh, show now. And she's going to start killing people and fucking uh, making making guys, like, wet their pants like she did in the movie. <laughs> Don't watch that movie, by the way. St stay the hell away from it. And, <laughs> yeah. Don't even think about it. Uh, trust me, it's not worth it. But, there's the storyline between her and Amanda, where Amanda is... You know, I, I, I just... I don't like Amanda the way that she's confronting people, and she's she's almost acting like a Cobra Kai. Like, I don't know if the creators thought about that or not, but the way that she just keeps on instigating things, and, you know, I know that she can say, well, they instigated things first. And, you know, I know, I mean, that's probably, I would, I would have done a lot of the stuff that she did too, but I'm just saying, like, she acts like a Cobra Kai with the way that, you know, she shows up at Tori's work, and she's confronting her there and here, and, uh, you know, she's doing all these things to sort of piss off Tori, and I, I don't know where that's going to go, honestly, uh, but that's one of the weaker storylines. But I will say it's still good. You know, I still like it because I really like how Kreese has become almost like a father figure to her. And I'd love to see more. Of sorry, I'd love to see more of that storyline. You know, I think that they have a great dynamic, probably one of my favorite dynamics of the show. But then on the flip side of that, they're literally just doing the same thing, but with Miguel and Daniel. And that's where I kind of... That's the weakest storyline so far. I really don't like this sort of Hallmark movie style misunderstanding thing where, you know, Johnny doesn't like that Daniel is spending time with Miguel. You know, I understand because... It's upsetting to me. You know, this show was built on Johnny and Miguel. And now all of a sudden, it's a lot more Daniel-centric. And it feels like a lot of the show's uh, story development happens because of Daniel. Whereas in the first two seasons, it was a lot more to do with Johnny. And I, I so I, didn't, I don't like that storyline with the father and son thing. Because it just feels like it's it's sort of doing the same thing that Amanda and Tori are doing uh, a little bit. And, I mean, Tori and Chris too. But I do love the, the dojos conflicting. I love the contrast of, you know, you have Cobra Kai and then you have Miyagi-Do. Very different teaching styles. And I love seeing them clash and seeing all the different problems they have with that. Uh, that's that's probably one of my favorite things from the season so far. And it also reminds me a lot of the movie that they talk about and reference, which is Rocky Three. You know, that's my favorite movie of the Rocky series. So I guess you could say, like, this this season's influenced a lot by Rocky Three, and, and so that's why I love it the most. Like, I don't know. I, I, I think that it's still, it's really, really good. I love it. Uh, I, I, I highly, if you guys quit watching, if you, you know, you didn't watch after season one or two or three, you know, go back, watch season four, uh, have fun, 
you know, watch it week to week. Don't binge it like an idiot like me. And have fun because this is such a great thing that we've gotten Cobra Kai Season 4, you know, throughout the year. What have we gotten? Fear Street Trilogy. Ugh! God, Fear Street, that, that trilogy, I, that trilogy makes me want to beat people up with, with karate. Uh, you know, you got Matrix 4, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people complain and this is some, I shot another review and then I got interrupted and so I had, I had to redo everything. Uh, and that review, you know, I mentioned how People complain that Cobra Kai is cheesy sometimes, like wah, wah, wah. Like, I prefer cheesy sometimes over shitty all the times, like with Matrix 4. Uh, so I would say that. So overall, I love this show. I can't wait to continue watching it. You know, again, it's such a positive thing. It's such a feel-good thing, and I really uh, love what I saw, what I've seen this season. Uh, it's just, it's really good, and I can't wait to see what happens with more with Terry because he's my favorite character. I would say almost overall with the whole series, like I would say Johnny, Miguel, and then Terry, and then Hawk, and then like Tori and Crease fighting together. Like these are such great characters, and they're all getting respect. Like, there's not a character, even though the story structure is bad, at least there's no character who's getting, like, disrespected and or they're getting shortchanged, you know? I really love that, too, because a lot of the times in these newer movies that have to do with older properties, you'll have an older character and he gets really disrespected and he gets treated like shit. And he's he's shown to be like a weak man or a weak woman. Uh, and I really hate it when they do that. Uh, but with this show, they really put respect on everybody. And I love that about the show. Uh, you know, they respect the elderly. They <laughs> Not the elderly, but like the... They respect the... Uh, they respect the badass, iconic characters as much as the newer characters. And also, I think that the romance stuff has actually been okay. Like, there really hasn't been any cringy romance so far this season, which is a surprise because the last two seasons have been just chock full of cringy teen romance drama shit. Uh, not, not too much, though, but anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please like it and subscribe, you know, you gotta say it like, subscribe, if you want to see my second half of Cobra Kai Season 4 review tomorrow, on January 1st, 2022, and then please comment and let me know what you think, and, and you know, let's have a discussion, do, do you disagree with some of the points that I've made, because, uh, you know, I just do all these reviews on the spot, I don't put, I don't write a script, I don't plot things out like, oh, I have to make these certain points. You know, it's all off the top of my head. Uh, so, you know, I'd love to have some more discussions if you guys uh, have anything you'd like to say. And then, uh, yeah, goodbye, everybody. See you soon for part two.